and welcome to In the Court of the Winter Nay for a very special edition because again we're doing another related album. Uh, those in the know will know and those not in the know will think, huh? Yeah, a Bill Roiflin album, sort of. Bill Roiflin. Who's Bill Roiflin? Well, ex-ministry. He was in ministry. That thing called 1000 Homo DJs, whatever that is, that was on Nativity in Black, the Black Sabbath tribute album doing Supernaut. And everyone thought it was Trent Reznor. That band. He was involved with that. A very long time ago, obviously. And he replaced, what is his name, Mr. Berry, the very innovative drummer in R.E.M., probably the only interesting part of R.E.M. Wasn't given much creative control, I think, in R.E.M. I think he was seen as a hired gun. He was probably a better drummer, actually. But was seen as, which is a shame. So he was with them until they, they disbanded. I think they disbanded in 2011. Don't know a huge amount about R.E.M., so um, I know they are good. I, I do recognise that. It's just, yeah. And then, of course, became Crimson affiliated on Scarcity, or at least had done before that. Became a, f a full member of King Crimson in 2013, touring in 2014. For what I think, you know, is one of the great epochs of the band. I think this is this is just so wonderful. And I don't think people are appreciating it fully yet. I think my prediction. I'm right, I know better. But sadly, actually left in 2016, early 2016. I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know. I haven't been on the DGM stuff enough to, to actually know that had happened. And then I, I read it gone and went on DGM and looked at the lineup for the 2016 tour dates and it's someone else. Uh, which I should name really, I can't remember the name, but we'll, we'll certainly talk about that. I'm sure there'll be another release by the time we get to the end after this epic piece of awesome here. Yeah, so we, we rewind. We rewind to the late 90s. 1999, King Crimson obviously have just tried to make an album and failed. Probably 1998 actually. Bill Roffley makes a solo album. Birth of a Giant. Invites Fripp to play on his, his solo album. He comes along. Trey Gunn comes with him. And he makes a solo album, but he also basically just plugged in their instruments and they played a load of stuff. And that's this. Repercussions of Angelic Behaviour. Now what this, what that means is this is a prototype for what came later. I don't think, you know, they did this and thought, oh, we'll do that. I think it was already there as a thing. And I think Project 2 seemed to be already planned at this point. But here we, here we hear something early, you know, an interesting development in, in, in what was happening with the project. So a lot of things turn out to be quite established um, already at this point before Project 1 have played, interestingly, or Project 2. I think he said, for three days, Robert, Trey and I sat behind or strapped on our instruments, rolled tape and played. It isn't a project, obviously, because it doesn't say King Crimson Project on it. Repercussions of angelic behaviour. It's it's billed as Rifling Fripp Gun. So it's not billed as a Rifling solo album that would make any sense, because it's improvisation. And during the recording, supposedly Fripp and Gun were sort of secretly talking about their secret plans for what was actually, we think, Project 2. But it really does have that sound of a project, uh, more so than the Nashville rehearsals. Those patches are all there, you know, the baboon patch thing and, and, and stuff. I think maybe Trey Gunn hasn't developed quite as much yet. That's not there yet. Trey Gunn seems to be playing bass, whereas in projects he kind of isn't playing bass, he's doing something else. A bit more world music, maybe. In fact, the website's called First World Music, so it can't be world music. Don't know. Much less electronic, there's a little bit of electronic, which I'll talk about. I think there's only one track. A lot of acoustic drums. So the drums, a bit like Project One actually, but Fripp and Gunn. Much more like Project 2 and 3 and 4, actually. So there you go. Uh, the songs. Open it up. Open it up. What, 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 what. It's a postcard. Look. So the songs aren't on here. And I, I get the impression. I, I thought there weren't some titles. It was just 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And it says here, random plays required for full effect. So the, 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 the song list doesn't matter. That's what they're saying. Actually, I think the, the song list on there does work quite well, actually. But it's an interesting idea. Um, you put it into iTunes and the, the, the titles come up there, so that's that's quickly extinguished, sadly. <laughs> They're quite short tracks, some very short tracks. There's no real progression between tracks, partially because they're short, I suppose, but I think in the projects they sort of developed an ability to make more sort of improvised things, so that's interesting. The tracks. Track one is called Strangers on a Train, and it's the familiar tinkling, the baboon, ting ting ling stuff and all that, um, and some drumming. And things. Uh, track two is called Blast Part One. Noisy Fripp soloy stuff. Uh, very thrack. Track three is called Lost and Found. Lost and Found Highway, I think. Cool evil noise, evil rhythm. Some soundscapes with some rolls on it, and it gets louder and very very project that one. Track four, Hootin' Annie at the Pussycat Cafe, I like the title. This is much sillier, so it reminds me more of Project Two, which which is lighter. Difference differences is the drumming is it's it's Project Two like, but it's I think it's much more live. Him being a drummer. You can be a bit tighter with that. Um, track five, Heard Not Seen. And that's Soundscapes with Stick Stuff. And then track six is Blast Part Two. 
Uh, Soundscapes, mental fast stuff, very Project 2 that one. And then track 7, Retarded with Steam. Really interesting one, sort of uh, strange CD rhythm. It's kind of something maybe in the projects they tried to do and it doesn't quite come out, maybe? That's probably the one, I think, from this album. That's the, I think that's the interesting one. Track 8, Re-Entry. And lots of st sustained guitar and random noisy stuff. Track 9, Brown Souffle. Love the title. And it's more CD stuff, but more sort of random noisy. And finally, Last Stop. We have some sequenced drums on there. Uh, quite different to the rest of the album, more bit Project 4 but without, but without the roar, without the roar of Project 4 if you like, a bit, bit quieter. And it's actually the in, inter, Into the Frying Pan riff, not contra, Contrary Construction, the uh, do, 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 that riff. <laughs> and that's it, interesting one. Worth a spin if you really like the projects and you've got all the project stuff, this one's worth hunting down as a curiosity. It's not amazing, I think Birth of a Giant's a really good album as well. There's a bit of singing on that one so it's quite different. Uh, so yeah, mm. see you next time.